Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be covering part two of the next generation NCLEX concepts that are important for you to know. I'm not saying this is going to be on your test. What I am saying is that I encourage you to make sure you know these concepts before you go take your test. Now, in part one, I saw a couple comments, uh, students asking me when I was actually going to teach this list. So you guys just want me to do everything, right? Right? You guys are the baby birds and you have your mouth open and I'm mama bird and I go, I go get the worm. I go get the worm. I eat the worm and I come back and I regurgitate it, and you guys have your mouths open. And I just put the worms in your mouth. Really? Is that what we're doing? Come on. I'm, I'm telling you what you need to know. Put in the work. Now, you know, I might do some lessons here or there, but I am not going to do lessons on every single thing on this list. Guys, you have to learn. Go into the book and learn about it. Make sure you understand it. Anyway, that's my um, speech. Now, before we get started, guys, as always, I'm going to ask you to please support my channel. And I should have kind of asked you that before I gave your speech, shouldn't I? But anyway, here we are. Please support me and support this channel by liking this video. Give it a thumbs up. Even if you're not happy with what I just said, you're going to love this video. So go ahead and like it now so you don't forget. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And don't forget, guys, I'm offering Next Generation NCLEX reviews, part one and part two. In part one, I'm teaching you how to think like the test writer. I'm teaching you what the test writers are trying to pull out of you. I'm teaching you what you need to be, need to be thinking about before you even finish the question. Because once you understand how the test writers are thinking, it's gonna make your life a lot easier. In part two, I go over lots of next generation NCLEX types questions. I go over them the answers, the rationale, and just why the answer is the correct answer. If you've been watching my videos, you know how I rock. So be sure uh, to check that out if you're studying for your boards. If you're a current student and you are struggling, you have to do really, really well on your next exam. I made audio lessons just for you. Go to my website and check them out, nexusnursinginstitute.com. You can reserve your spot for one-on-one -on -one tutoring at my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. All right, guys, without further ado, let's get started. So we're going to start my list. What else? Oh, by the way, guys, if you haven't watched part one, go back and watch part one. But this is no particular order. Like I said, I haven't seen this exam. I don't know what's on this exam. But I have students that have been testing all over the country. And there are certain items they're seeing over and over and over, no matter what state they're in. So I kind of just compiled a list. But this by no means means that this is on your exam, okay? So um, first thing I have on my list is inter intimate partner violence. So if you're suspecting inter intimate partner violence, what do you do? I'm gonna tell you not, make sure you go read about it, but I'm gonna tell you now, when you suspect abuse or suicide, the first thing you always do is get that patient away from the person you're suspecting that they're, you know, that that is abusing them. If you have to lie and say that, you know, there's a diagnostic test for them to come with you so you can get them away from the person you suspect is abuser, you do that. You absolutely, you lie. And you say that um, there can't be any um, electronic devices because what happens is the abuser will usually have the person have the phone on speaker so they can still hear everything that's going on. So the first thing you're going to do is separate them from the person you think is abusing them. Then the second thing you do is ask them directly. Do not beat around the bush. Ask them if they're being hurt, if they're being injured, are they in danger? Because what happens is many people who are being abused, uh, they want to tell someone, but no one's asked them directly. Everyone's always kind of went around the bush. I think I said that saying incorrectly, run around the bush. They go around the bush. No, it's something physical to a bush. They hit the bush. When, what I'm saying is they don't ask directly and you need to ask directly. Somebody tell me in the comment section because I've had a problem with this before. For some reason, I can't remember the saying for when someone doesn't want to tell you something directly. Please let me know in the comment section what it is. I'm going to feel so stupid when I see it. But anyway, make sure you talk to the person directly and ask them if they're in danger, if that person is harming them. 
So intimate partner violence. Next on the list, oh, biophosphonate. So it's very important. Make sure you know uh, that drug class. Make sure you know the indications, what type of patient you're going to be giving it to. Patient with, you know, osteoporosis. Make sure you know that you got to take it with a full glass of water on an empty stomach. You need to be sitting for up for at least 30 minutes, right, after you take that medication. Make sure you know everything about that drug class. Uh, therapy therapeutic communication barriers. That's what I have on my list. So what are the barriers to therapeutic communication? What do you not say to your patient? Remember, you want your patient to be able to express themselves. You want them to talk. So you're not going to keep interrupting them, right? You're not going to keep looking at your watch or the clock. You're not going to keep tapping your foot or your fingers, you're not going to look around instead of, you know, making eye contact. You're not going to ask the patient why or what made you because you're putting them on the defense. So make sure you know those blocks to therapeutic communication. Nursing interventions for shock. So what a lot of students who are coming back to me, they're telling me that um, you're given a list of nursing actions and you have to prioritize them. So if your patients are in your patients in shock, what are you going to do? Um, delirium versus dementia. Uh, you a lot. They're telling me that you have to tell the difference. So they'll give you all of these signs and symptoms and you have to take the mouse and move it either under delirium or dementia. Don't forget delirium short term. It's acute. It comes on suddenly. There's an underlying cause. Once that cause is resolved, boom, delirium goes away. Dementia, not so much. It's the opposite. With dementia, it's slow. It's progressive. That means as time goes on, it only gets worse. Um, there is no cure. So make sure you know the difference between those two. Priority actions for anorexia. So patient who hasn't been eating, what is your priority action going to be? Um, you're going to prioritize fluid and electrolytes before their emotional state right? You're going to prioritize nutrition before teaching. So make sure you know your nursing interventions and the priority of those nursing interventions. Level thyroxine, Synthroid, uh, make sure you know this medication, make sure you know uh, what type of patient you expect it to be ordered for. So for example, if a patient has hyperthyroidism and that medication is ordered, are you just going to give it blindly or are you going to question that medication? You're going to hold... Oh. Excuse me, guys. You're going to hold that uh, medication because you're going to question it and you're going to call the healthcare provider because if this patient already has hyperthyroidism, why are we giving them Synthroid? So make sure you know that medication and you know the adverse effects. If that patient's getting a toxic level, what are the signs and symptoms that we're going to see in this patient so that if we recognize it, we don't give the next dose, okay? Make sure you know that. Oh, also you need to know uh, which way those thyroid hormones go. So for hyper hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism, where does your T3, your uh, T4 go and your TSH? Does it go up? Does it go down? Know which way they go. Next on the list is Addison versus Cushing versus SIADH versus DI, diabetes insipidus. So you need to know the difference in the clinical manifestation. So you may get those four different clinical manifestations. And with your mouse, you have to move those manifestations under the correct uh, diagnosis. So make sure you know the difference between all four and the nursing interventions. Positions for alleviating shortness of breath. So if your patient's short, short of breath, how are you going to position them? You want to have them sitting up. You want to take pressure off the diaphragm. You want their lungs to expand. Um, other positions? Okay. A patient who just had a laminectomy, you're going to have them lying flat on their back. You're going to make sure you log roll them. If when you're moving them, there's at least two nurses uh, to move the patient versus your lumbar puncture when it's being performed versus the patient who has increased intracranial pressure. Make sure you know different positioning for different diagnoses. Oh, excuse me, I have more. So there's shortness of breath, laminectomy, increased intracranial pressure, a lumbar, lumbar puncture, thoracentesis, and insertion of a suppository. So for all those things that I just mentioned, make sure you know how you're going to position your patient. Again, uh, if the patient's having shortness of breath versus they just had a laminectomy versus they just had a lumbar puncture versus they're experiencing intracranial pressure versus they're having a thoracentesis versus you're inserting, you're inserting a suppository. 
Next, risk factors for osteoporosis. So who's most at risk for osteoporosis? You know, female that's postmenopausal, Asian women, women of smaller frames, know those risk factors. Hemorrhoid prevention. What are you going to teach your patient about hemorrhoid prevention? And um, from what I'm understanding, this is being seen as, um, it's being framed as uh, a maternity question. So your patient uh, just delivered and they have hemorrhoids, what are you going to teach? You're going to teach about fluids, fiber, offer a warm sit bath. Reading of blood gas results. So make sure you know how to read blood gas results. I teach both methods. So if you're having a hard time with reading blood gas results, you will find those videos. I have a couple of them in my fundamentals of nursing playlist. Okay. So be sure to check that out. So anyway, you should be able to read blood gas results and know the nursing intervention. So know what your nursing interventions are going to be. If your patient's in respiratory acidosis versus respiratory alkalosis versus metabolic acidosis versus metabolic alkalosis. Okay. Insulin. And I have a note here that says lots and lots and lots of insulin. So make sure you know the insulin's like the back of your hand. And it makes sense. So many Americans have diabetes, okay? So make sure with the insulins, you know the onset, you know the peak, you know the duration. And more important than that, make sure you understand the significance of that, right? So it's not enough that you know what the onset of insulin is. Do you understand what that means? Do you understand that the onset of insulin, what that really means is that onset lets you know when you need to feed that patient because that's when that insulin starts to work. That's when it can start to drop the patient's blood sugar. And what kills you faster, hyperglycemia or hypoglycemia? Hypoglycemia. So it's very important to know by when you need to feed the patient, right? Insulin peak. Okay, great. You know what the insulin peak is, but do you understand the significance of it? The insulin peak tells you when to recheck your patient, when to reassess them, because that is when they're at the highest risk for having a hypoglycemic reaction, right? And the duration. Yes, you need to know your insulin durations, but more importantly, you need to know what that means. You need to, you need to know that's how long the insulin works because that insulin duration is going to let you know the next time that that patient's going to need um, another dosage. So make sure you know that because they're seeing lots of questions about insulin. What must be reported? Okay, so um, you'll be given, you may be given a list of situations and you have to be able to decide what um, you're mandated to report or not. So for example, you know, sexual or physical abuse of a minor or someone who is mentally uh, disabled or uh, certain STDs, you're mandated to report to the state. So just know um, what you're mandated to report. Foods, lots of foods. Do you know foods that are high in fiber versus foods that are high in vitamin C versus foods that are high in vitamin K versus foods that are high in sodium versus foods that are high in calcium versus foods that are high in fiber? Please don't shoot the messenger, guys. I'm just trying to help you guys out. Let's keep going. Next, uh, who is immunocompromised? Can you recognize who's immunocompromised? Such as, you know, patients with HIV, AIDS, patients who are getting chemotherapeutic drugs, organ transplant recipients, patients who are on long-term steroids, patients who have autoimmune disorders, such as lupus, myasthenia gravis, Guillain-Barre. Make sure you know patients who are immunocompromised. Transphenoidal hypophysectomy. So you need to know what type of surgical approach is done with the transphenoidal hypophysectomy. So if you're given an illustration and the question asks you, what's the surgical approach? You need to know that that surgical approach is through the nose and the sinus cavities, not the head, right? So make sure you know that. Next, oh, antidotes. Make sure you know the your antidote. So, you know, your antidote for heparin, which is protamine sulfate, your antidote for coumadin, which is vitamin K, your antidote for um, dig toxicity, which is uh, digibine, your antidote for, for what? Um, magnesium sulfate, which is calcium gluconate. Make sure you know your antidotes. Symptoms of ruptured appendix. What does that say? Symptoms of ruptured appendix, oh, and priority action. So you need to recognize the symptoms of the appendix 
having ruptured. So, you know, the classic case scenario is a patient comes in, they've got the pain, they've been diagnosed with um, appendicitis, and all of a sudden, that pain has gone away. They don't feel the pain any anymore. All of a sudden, that abdomen is, you know, rigid and bored like. What are you suspecting? You know, the blood pressure has gone down. The heart rate and um, respirations have increased. Um, urine output has decreased. What are you suspecting? You're, you're suspecting perforation. What's your priority action to get that patient in the operating room? Because if they don't get surgery right away, they will die. Your next action is to call the healthcare provider, call the surgeon. We need to get this patient um, into surgery immediately. And last on my list is compartment syndrome. Oh my gosh, I've talked to you guys about compartment syndrome so much. I'm not even going to go there. I've 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 beat you down with compartment syndrome. Make sure you know the signs and symptoms of compartment syndrome. Make sure you know the nursing interventions. And of course, make sure you know fasciotomy, the um the surgical intervention for the patient in compartment syndrome. And I think that's it. That's it for this list. So guys, you have lots of homework to do. Part one and part two, get to reading, get to practicing questions. Make sure that you're knowing these diagnoses, these medications, um, these procedures, and these diagnostic tests like the back of your hand before you go take your NCLEX. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Also, don't forget, almost daily, you can find me covering a variety of nursing topics across my social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. My handle is still the same, Nexus Nursing. Be sure to reserve your spot for an NCLEX review part one and part two by going to my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Guys, thank you so much for watching. You guys will catch me on the next video.